time? Wait, did you say there's not enough time in your day? Well, let's learn what you're going to say instead of that ever, ever again. Welcome to the Best Years Podcast. This is Dr. Darlene at whatstopsyou.com, speaking to Generation X and baby boomers who want more. I'll share power skills and tools with you to get your mojo back on a conscious and unconscious level. Be ready for real and lasting change. I've done quite a few podcasts on time, time management, how to organize your life, organization of life, feeling crazy, going crazy, balanced living, principles of time management, and I've loved doing them. It's just so thrilling to me because I think I've wired my time management, always working on it, have a few little glitches, which I divulge to you, the the parts that I'm working on. But the principles of time management, in fact, there's a whole podcast on that and the value of time you're wanting, you're going to want to catch as well, which say we only have 24 hours in a day. And how do we smash that all into that tight box that at midnight ends at zero and the next day you get a full box, but there's no way that anyone has more than 24 hours in a day. No one. So since that is true, we've been going through how you deal with it. And so make sure you listen to all of the part one, two, and three on these uh, time management podcasts. So today we're continuing. Let me get my notes out. I've got my ebook here. It's called, let's see, I call it Time Equals Money. You can grab that on my website, whatstopsyou.com, or you can just follow along with me. We've gone through one through 16 ideas. And so this podcast is a continuation of that. And if you're hearing this for the first one, you're still going to get a whole lot of cool, great stuff out of this. Because I'm going to start with my fave thing. And like I said, there's we're going through 38 really cool ideas I've come with up with that you assess one to five. Five is the best I'm graded at. One is I'm terrible at it. And if you're great at everything, then you don't need this podcast. And if you're terrible, you need it. And if you're in the middle, then you can always refine it. And like I said, if you're great, you can fall off the wagon or you can have little parts you need to refine. So let's start with number 16 of 38 today. And again, this is my fave of all things. I know I say that a lot because there's a lot of favorite things, but I love the sticky note thing. Listen to this. You know how you use sticky notes? I want you to notice your life. Do you have sticky notes all over the place? Why do you have them? Now, if they are affirmations all over your room, you can leave those. But my premise is to use a sticky note that you use temporarily that says, call the doctor, stick it on your windshield, or make sure to say happy birthday to my brother, stick it on the window, or stick it on the wall or your mirror. Those are wonderful sticky notes. You gotta have them in every color. I got, I got a whole drawer of sticky notes. And my premise is that sticky notes should burn up at midnight. So if you've written sticky notes all over the place, yay, just make sure at midnight, you take them off where they are and burn them up. And last I said, they're affirmations. You can leave those forever. So temporary sticky notes should never be there for days and days because we don't want to lie to ourselves and say, well, this will motivate me. And then you have call my brother and tell him that you're thinking about him because he had a new puppy and you keep putting it off. Well, don't, don't put it off. Hey, you know what the best antidote for procrastination is? Ready? You ready? The antidote for procrastination, the very best is don't ever say you're going to do it. Uh (laughs) Because if you never say you're going to do it, you can't procrastinate it. Uh So if you say you're going to do it, do it or don't say it. I know, right? I'm going to do a whole podcast on procrastination. But for now, sticky notes cause you to procrastinate because it's sticking on the window. Well, don't put it on the window unless it's just going to be there for 24 hours. Then let's say you didn't call your brother and tell him you're happy he got a new puppy. So take the sticky note off because sticky notes just lie to us and write it in your final destination planner, which we talked about on the last podcast. Oh, let's see. What did I call the last one? Principles of time management or time management strategies or organizational skills. I can't remember. So make sure you catch that one. So sticky notes are gone. 
You're going to put it in the final destination that we've talked about. Do you love it? Okay, great. Next one. Never write things more than twice. Uh, for example, I wrote a, not, a note the first time on a sticky note, and then I record it in my planner. Or I wrote, write a note the first time on the palm of my hand, and then I write it in my electronic planner. Or I write a note the first time on a napkin in a restaurant, and then I record it in my planner. Or I write it on a napkin, and then I do it and throw the napkin away. So you want to write things down. You can do them in temporary places. Trust me, almost always you will see me with something written on the palm of my hand. And it's really cool because when you go to the restroom, you wash your hands. So you know that that's not going to stay on your hand, so it makes you hurry. Have you ever written something on the palm of your hand and the next day there's a remnant and you're like, dang it, I can't remember. So we all know it's really temporary to write it on your hand because you might give in the shower soon after. So is it legal in my system, which by the way is a really good system, to write it on your hand? Absolutely yes. Just know it's temporary, so holy crap, go do it. When you think of it, do it. I had a manager once. I was a director of aerobics club, of aerobics program, and and I'd walk into Rick, and he'd be at his desk, and I'd say, you know, we need to make sure we call so-and-so to remind him of his dues. I'm a little concerned or something like that. And all of a sudden, he picks up the phone. I'm like, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm calling him. Really? Right now? And he did that all the time. And And I look at that, and I'd say, Rick, where is the uh, contract about da da da? And he go, <laughs> he grabbed the front desk. Oh, oh, here, let me go. And all of a sudden, here, really? You just did it right now? And that's something brilliant. You want to burn a hole and focus on what you're doing. But if you're in a space where you're, so his space, he was focusing on Darlene and burning a hole in my relationship and conversation and what Dar needed. And so he just did it right then and there. Done. And it was done. He didn't need to write it down, do it later. So that's kind of an interesting way to just hurry, organize your time, get it done. It's done. And it was compartmentalized for him. So it wasn't really distracting. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to get those things done. Okay. Next, got some more for you. I carry only two items at a time. I consolidate everything I carry into one or two items. For example, a purse and a planner, a briefcase and a purse, or a backpack and files. So I remember the days you had a Franklin planner, you had your purse, you had your briefcase, you had your laptop, and you had a backpack, and you had to carry your dog's leash. I always have a dog, so I'm kind of like, what's legally blonde? Ah, no. I have a dog named Tinkerbell. Don't judge me. And you'll always hear her bells. Tink, let's hear your bells. She's not moving. So we always have these little bells to the side, whether it's your dog or something else. So when you carry things, and this is kind of duh anymore, because we have phones that have everything in them. So maybe this is redundant and I need to update my ebook. But nonetheless, make sure that you consolidate all the things that you need. And by the way, listen. My dog's snoring now, so you might be able to hear that in the background, too. So just always to warn you that those are the little noises, and you're going to hear a rooster on my property. So I'm side tasking here and telling you about sounds extracurricular that are kind of cool. The next one, I am present and focused on the task. Now, I was focused on the task talking to you. I took a side note to talk about the jingle bell on my dog and her snoring, which is actually getting louder. Side notes are okay. People say, that's ADD. It's not ADD if you go away and then you come back to where you're at. ADD is a real thing where you go out and out and out and you don't know where you were and you're not sure how to come back. And and I'll do a podcast on that disorder as well, which is a real thing. So whether you have ADD, ADHD, whether you're just like me where your brain is so freaking fast, but you know where you're at all the time, you <laughs> can come back. 
any of those kinds of things, distractions, looking away, you've got your main topic that you're focusing on. You can look away at your dog. You can look away. But to keep it present, you want to do what? Turn off your media. You want to turn off the things that you can. Tell people who are going to come over to come over later and really plan out and focus. And as my dad said, burn a hole in it, darling. Really super focus on what you're doing. And then when the task is done, file it, set it aside, move on. And then you go to the next task and you be super present with that next task. Now, how different is that than doing something a little, running in to get your coffee, coming back, but you forgot where you were, so you get on Facebook. And then you forgot where you were, so you go out and get the mail and you start opening the mail. And then your friend calls and you think, oh, I want to do that. And that's disorganized thinking, disorganized management of time. It's not in control. It's not saying yes or no to the appropriate things. And it's confusing and frustrating mingled with procrastination underlying it. So the antidote, like I've said, is the antidote to procrastination is never say you're going to do it. If you're going to do it, do it. Block it out. Do it. You can, like I said, flip over to the little things, but come right back so that you've got your, your presence of what you're doing. That's really a whole podcast, what I just said. That whole entire thing is like seriously a whole lot to say and and work on it. Okay, turning the page, we've got some more here. Next one. Love this one. Oh, this one, you entrepreneurs are going to flip your eyes and not really listen to me. But I want you to listen to me. And as you're driving, half listening, then listen up. And if you're sitting at home with piece of paper, get ready to write. I stop working at six o'clock in parentheses or whatever time I planned to stop. Do not keep working all day. I remember being in multi-levels, which by the way, I was supersonic good at. I could build an organization in one week and it would just grow. And it was 24 seven and it started to annoy me. I'd be out to dinner with my partner and I'd be, you know, the waitress trying to spiel the waitress. And it was always on. And that's annoying so much to me. I could, you know, after so many years, I could hardly stand it. I coach people now with multi-level and I tell them you need spaces and blocks where you turn it off. The three foot rule, sponsor everyone within three feet, turn it off. Because if you don't turn it off and it's always on, surely you may do really well in rock and roll in the beginning, but there's something called fatigue and it's true and it can deplete your adrenals. And if you don't rest your bicep in between sets, your bicep is not going to work. It'll just drop and fall. So this is the mastery of stopping, turning it off. I, I have a joke and I do podcasts and I think I laugh at myself because it's really super funny. I do posts on Instagram about I'm going to go on vacation now. And how I do it is I put my phone in the garage on and I turn it off. <laughs> and then I come back in the house. Hey, best vacation ever. Literally, like you have all your stuff, you got your dogs, you got your food, you got your clothes, but no one can bug me because today, how many people come over? and knock on your door. Never. Okay, fine. Amazon deliveries, right? Every single day in my life. But that's all. People don't come over anymore unannounced. And so stopping. Quit it. None of this 24-7 working. And I've had you say this before. Repeat after me. I am not a robot. I am not a machine. I need rest. My brain hurts. My brain. See, for me, I work at home. I teach college online right now. Usually it's live, but it's online. I'm in my house a lot and I need to turn off my brain. I don't need to rest like, you know, because I've been running around all day. I've been here and I work out, of course, but I got to turn my brain off. Some of you need to turn your physical labor off if you've been building houses all day. So I don't care what it is. If you're spiritual all day, oh my gosh, you got to go out and just have a beer tonight. Change it up. And that's why we say we need the day of rest. And the day of rest, if you are programming computers all week, go for a hike. If you're a hike guide all week, 
on the seventh day, program computers or whatever. So that you change it up and you do not work 24-7, as I've said before, eight hours of work, eight hours of play or leisure, and eight hours of sleep every day. Balanced living. Haven't we said balanced living is what we really want? Because a wheel rolls when it's balanced. And when it's not balanced, it doesn't go. So I love this one. Each day I'm done with work and then focus on other things with a different part of your brain. And boom, there it is. The next one is similar. I block out time for work and pleasure in my planner. Each day I plan 10 minutes to one hour for downtime, meditation, cat naps, etc. Now listen, this is talking about inside your eight hours of work. I actually record times for them in my planner. For example, I write down power nap. Now, if you're in a business in a corporation, can you do it? Uh, if you have your own office or if there's an outside somewhere. So I teach college, right? I have 20 minutes between two classes, say. Huh. If you opened my door, you would see the professor in my office on the ground, laying there. I have a blanket and a teddy bear. Don't judge me. The teddy bear is like a pillow. And I take a 10-minute power nap every day. If you listen to my work, you'll know that that's what I do every day. I have to because my brain's going all day long and then vroom. We're going to reset. Hello. How many times have you needed to reset your phone this week? Even robots need reset and reboots. So reboot yourself. So you write down in your daytime or power nap, downtime, and that's when you put your phone in your desk drawer and you go outside if you don't have an office office. You go outside and lay on the ground. If it's snowing outside, you just go in the foyer. Hey, how many times do I go to my car? Now, don't judge me. I know, but this is why I'm the queen of time management because I do these things. And I'm when you see me, I'm kind of fast. I'm efficient and I'm kind of strong and powerful and, and I can wear you out. Uh huh. And so I wear myself out. So each one of my cars, again... You can embrace this for me. I have a bear in every shape and size. If you ever want to get me a present for anything, a bear will do. Big ones, small, medium. I have neck bears I carry on airplanes. Uh huh. Middle size I hold when I go to the dentist on my stomach. And in my car, I have a middle size one that's a pillow. So when I recline for my 10 minutes, I put it behind my neck. And the arms, if you shove them in, it makes the pillow higher. If you pull the arms out and the legs, then the pillow's smaller. I know. <laughs> so really, it's not the bear I love. It's the size of the pillow. <laughs> so that's just the perfect size because you can put your head in the crink of its neck. So in your office, you have a bear and say it's for your grandkids or your nephew. And then have one in your car and say it's for your grandkids or your nephew. Lying is, these, are, these aren't even white lies. These are like uh, see-through lies. They're just little, it's none of your business. I have a bear, so what? Get over it. And so, yeah, that's what you do is you have your little regroup, reboot times. Go out to your car. If it's cold, turn the heater on. Lay back for 10 minutes. Reset. Are you kidding me? Bam! You go back to work and you are on. And you're not dying. And by bedtime, you're tired, but you're not so exhausted you haven't saved one ounce for your partner at the end of the day. And I have a whole podcast on that one where you spend it all. It's all gone. I haven't blocked out any time for leisure for myself. And at the end of the day, I don't really love you anymore. Tragic. And how could a 10-minute reset help you? At, let's say, noon, 4 o'clock, maybe even 7 p.m. have a reset. However that is, whether it's sleeping, sitting meditating, but media's off, etc. So I'm loving the fact that you may comment below and tell me how this is going for you because it's just beautiful. I love it. Next one. Oh, take a breath. Wow. So much. So good. Okay. Next one. I complete tasks each day and plan to have most items completed by Friday at 1.00. I play and enjoy leisure time on the weekends. If most of your tasks are not completed by Friday, you may need to delegate them 
or say no to them or rearrange certain items on your schedule. So if you are a manager, then Friday night meetings are kind of cool with your staff. So you can wind down and say, boom, this is what we need to do Monday. Or write your list down of, okay, these things aren't done. So Mondays with my staff, we're going to rock and roll, get it all done. Now, let's say you don't have a staff and you just have you. And let's say you don't have an outside job. You just have seven children, which is kind of what's happening to my kids. Well, I have a daughter who has twins, Eden Lee, lover, lover Lees on Instagram. Huh. 26,000 followers. You got to check that one out. Lover Lees. She has twins that are two, a five-year-old, and she's pregnant. Her kids are boys and she's pregnant with a girl. This is a side note that I'm going off on and I'll come back. Da 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 da. She's so happy. She had 20,000 views in two hours about her baby girl reveal on Instagram, right? I know. Okay. So that's Eden Lee, Lover Lee's on Instagram. Now, that one isn't going to be done by Friday by everything she's doing. So what would she do? And what's similar to a corporate owner who has, is running a whole business, has five employees, 10, a hundred employees. Once you have five employees, it's pretty much the same system as a hundred employees. And I have other, other podcasts on organizing and structuring business. But for now, think about how do you have downtime with all that to do? Well, oh my gosh, I have so much to say right now. Within every company or task, whether you're a mother, or a business owner, you have choice. It's called planning, stepping back and saying what needs to be done, what is most important, priority A, B, or C. My staff meetings, I always say, okay, Sarah, that's a plan A, or that's an A priority, or Molly, put this on a plan B, Or Heidi, put this on a plan C. Or Jasmine, can you put this on an A, double A priority? And a double A priority means don't go to the bathroom or eat until it's done. And so you structure as you daily plan what your priorities are going to be so that you can enjoy, whether it's your weekends or whether it's every Wednesday or you have a planned time off. Look, if you're working your whole life, then I'm sorry. Your spouse is going to leave you. And that's happened to about 17,000 people I know, including a husband I had in his his marriage and a friend's husband in their marriage. So if you're going to be a workaholic, then good luck with that and good luck with your health. The saying is, we spend our health to gain our wealth. And then with might and main, we turn around and spend our wealth to get our health again. So don't do that. Don't be a workaholic. It's not worth it. It's just not. So plan your four-day weekend if you can. Next one, and I kind of mentioned this about ABC priorities. That's what this one's about. And uh, make sure that you do that. And in your planner, physically type or write A, B, or C on your planner. Let your staff know. You can tell your children, sweetie. I know that you want to get your Lego set to do your, you know, to to get that whole set. And that's a C priority right now because A priority is we're going to plan your brother's birthday. You can even teach your children these kinds of priority type of thinking. So the Death Star will have to wait, but it is a B priority. It's not a C, it's a B. So maybe next month it'll be an A priority to get the finishing pieces to that Death Star. So lots of cool things that you can do when you really state out loud A, B, or C. It helps you really hold yourself to what priority it is in your mind instead of it floating around somewhere. And that's that's my point is you don't want that. Next one, have a master list that includes large projects such as pouring a new driveway, Remodeling the kitchen, changing offices, or moving the conference room furniture to another room. I'm reading my time management ebook here. I have referenced my master list on a large projects list and I write the smaller daily tasks in my planner. For example, call contractor, get a bid. So 
So in my notepad, I have master list. Boom. And I write down that I want to do an addition in my bedroom. I want a deck right there. I want a fence over there. That's a master list. And that's like an L priority. It's not A, B, or C. And then you can start saying, well, I'm going to just research the addition. So the addition's an L priority, but I'm going to research it this month and just kind of put feelers out. And that's a C, B priority. You love this? Okay, excellent. <laughs> Next one, kind of change the subject. If you need to pause and think about it, that's awesome. The next one is I always wear a watch. I set all clocks to the correct time. Now, this is a whole podcast. Wearing a watch. Do we do that if we have a phone? I say yes, because your phone's not always right at you and your wrist always, always is. Your wrist is always right with you. So my opinion, and I'm the one doing this podcast, so this is my opinion. You can do what you want once you hang up, is always wear a watch that has the right time. People who are late people tend to set their clocks late or early. They set them back or forward to fool themselves so that they'll be on time. Well, hey, look, don't do that. No, Mm -mm. never, Mm -mm. not, icky, no. Set every single clock to the satellite time it is. Respect the reality of what time is and do it. Always plan ahead. And this brings us to the next one. I plan extra, extra time between all appointments. I am always on time. For example, I plan on needing to run errands to Mc- errands, run to McDonald's, run to the dry cleaner. I call this the dry cleaner theory. You know, when you have all your clothes in your car, but you don't have time to drop them off. Dang it. Because if I did, I could pick them up on my way back. Ugh, it puts me a day off. So I don't get to do it. Or you need gas. So always add those extra little 10 minutes every time because you think you don't need them. And you're going to almost every single time something comes up. Why? Because we're real. And this is where we can really honor the reality of being human is things come up. You're driving by a house. You get impressed to go run in and say hi to Susie or drop a note in her mailbox. Do it. You have those extra 10 minutes. And if you arrive at your destination 10 minutes early, then you get to sit there and get on Facebook or Instagram and hang out or text your mom. It's it's a beautiful thing. The dry cleaner theory, always put 10 minutes before and make sure your watch is set on time. There are people who have internal time clocks that are super great and terrible time clocks that are super awful. My, My boyfriend and I, crack ourselves up. We've been in the fitness industry for well over 20 years, independent from each other. And we both have taught circuit classes where you have a one minute timer. You do a circuit for one minute. You're watching your clock. Okay, time's up. Move to the next circuit. He does like 45 second circuits. I always did a minute. So he and I crack ourselves up. We say, okay, don't look. What time is it? And literally day or night, we know what time it is within 10 minutes. We're kind of like a savant about it. In fact, it's almost every day he'll go, what time is it? It's 10 after 10. He goes, I think it's 5 after 10. And we'll look, and it's just right about then. Now, on the other hand, my sister, I spent a few days with her, and if she's listening, she's going to laugh right now. I won't say your name, but she's really bad at this. Okay, <laughs> She's super good at other things, and she's really good at things I'm bad at, but we're a little flipped on the time thing. So I was at her house. I go, hey, sis, what time is it? And she'd go, um, and she'd say the time. And you guys, she would be four hours off, literally. Now, sister, you remember that one time was it was at your old house by the mall at Fashion Place. Remember that? She'd be four hours off. And she just didn't have an internal time clock. So what we started with was having her wear a watch and have a timer go off every single hour. And today you can have your phone go off every hour so you get the internal time clock because an internal time clock is different than um, just looking at your clock and being on time. Internals, you can feel it coming. You can feel when you should stop and you can feel when you need to hurry. And honestly, 
I've said the last five years of my life have been the worst ever. Literally, I was all screwed up. You guys, I was raised in a house and stayed in it till I was 19 and married. I was in the same house. And just five months ago, we sold that house. My parents had that house for 58, 59 years or so. So that's the stability. But the last five years when I ran away with a divorce, went through a few relationships, I literally moved eight, E-I-G-H-T, eight times in five years. I moved my shit from this house. It was horrible. It was, and I lost everything. And I get to blame someone because it was something someone else did besides me that made me lose all my stuff and I got it all back now. But because of that, I found that I started becoming late a lot. And it was weird. I was the one who was late to almost everything. And I thought, okay, girlfriend, what's happening? And I had to revisit my ebook. And what happened is my internal time clock got mucked up because I was so busy with drama. Yeah. Can you relate? So anyone listening have drama in your life? Oh, really? Oh, that's probably a hundred percent of all of us. Yeah. That have this drama that causes our time clock to get knocked off. I don't know what day it is, let alone what time it is. So as you get stable and as stable as you can within your life's drama, that most of which is normal for people. And by the way, I'm really sorry if you're going through things because it does mess up so many things, one of which is your internal time clock. So work on that one consciously and wear that watch and keep looking at it. Okay, I think for today that's enough. Are you worn out? I'm worn out just thinking about it. And I've got from 29 to 38 more to go, so I'll do that in the next part. But for now, listen to this again and write down the items, practice them, rate them 1 to 5. How well are you doing 1 to 5? And become better Each day, as you practice anything that you practice, you'll get good at. If you practice the violin, you're just going to get better at it. So when you practice de-junk, you know, you practice de-junking your brain, you practice all the things that we've talked about, you will get better and better, better. Have fun with your sticky notes today and enjoy the control, appropriate control that you have over your life and your balanced living and your management of time. Have a great one, and we will talk soon. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to my channel so we can hang out. Also, go to www.whatstopsyou.com for notes to this podcast and learn more power skills to indeed live the best years of your life.